President Bush has just said that the ground war had begun because Iraq had ignored the Allies' ultimatum. He said President Saddam had undertaken to destroy Kuwait and he had no option but to enter into the final phase of the war. He said he had full faith in the ability of the coalition forces and called for prayers for the troops at the front who he said were risking their lives. The Prime Minister John Major spoke this morning about the massive ground attack to drive Iraq out of Kuwait. He said it was in order to drive Iraqi forces out of Kuwait and secure the full implementation of the Security Council resolution. It's believed the offensive began just a few hours after the deadline passed. Military sources say a broad offensive is underway with Allied troops engaging Iraqi forces along a 125-mile front. A 17,000-strong U.S. amphibious force is in position off Kuwait. Other reports not confirmed officially say large numbers of Iraqi troops have already begun surrendering. Iraq has retaliated by firing a Scud missile on targets in Saudi Arabia. Earlier, along the Saudi-Kuwaiti border, U.S. Marines destroyed 33 Iraqi armored vehicles and took an estimated 280 prisoners. A military spokesman said they had detected chemical gas, probably from a leaking dump that had been targeted by Allied bombers near the border. Meanwhile, at the United Nations, the Kuwaiti ambassador said his countrymen would be soon breathing the fresh air of freedom. The Iraqi ambassador said that he believed the war would be a long one. I'll have more headlines later. Back to John. Thanks, Anne. John Major has issued a statement from Downing Street. He spoke about the massive ground attack to drive Kuwait out of Iraq. It was, he said, in order to drive the forces out of Kuwait. I'm sorry, to drive Ku Iraq out of Kuwait and secure the full implementation of the Security Council resolution. His statement from Downing Street was timed to coincide with the President's statement in Washington. Now we go over to Riyadh and our correspondent there, Peter Allen. Peter, what can you tell us from Riyadh? Well, it's uh, dawn in Riyadh, John, and uh, the city was woken in rather spectacular style to announce almost the beginning of this land offensive. Uh, a last, perhaps a last scud, one which uh, came as usual into the, across, it seemed, to the centre of the city, was sought out by the Patriots. There was a huge explosion. We're just getting reports in that uh, part of the debris of that scud uh, fell on a school building. There are no reports as yet of injury. I have to say it was a night marked by thunderous noise of, of aircraft, many of them, I think, refuelling tankers, which often take off from uh, around this part of the country. It was quite clear that... Uh, uh, something very big was afoot. I must say all the signs last night were that uh, this offensive w was going ahead. As we heard of those atrocities occurring in Kuwait, the reports of those atrocities, um, as we heard of the burning oil fields, as we heard indeed that bombs had fallen in Baghdad even before the expiry of the deadline announced by President Bush. It was clear that uh, as far as he was concerned, Iraq had run out of time, I think. It was reported from Bill Neely in Washington, uh, Peter, that President Bush apparently signed the order for this ground war even before the deadline was reached, passed it through the chain of command to General Schwarzkopf. Therefore, as soon as the deadline passed, General Schwarzkopf was free to take the military decision off his, on, 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 on his own initiative. Is that what uh, military sources there are confirming? We're not getting a lot of information this morning from military sources, but I think it was quite clear that they were all set to go. Indeed, I, I must say, in retrospect, when you look at the way that the, uh, this particular conflict has been organised, and as I speak, another of those planes thundering over above me, so I apologise if my voice is for a second drowned out. I must say it's uh, seen throughout this conflict that there has been a very steady progression in the way that the Allies have built up this uh, conflict. They, first of all, we had the air assault, then we had the the navies joining in, then we had the combined air and land assault, then we had the land increasingly, the tanks getting involved, increasingly the incursions through that uh, sand wall, the berm which is built along the border and it's all seemed a very inexorable process that, uh, and, and this is logical outcome. The Allies have not actually flinched and not changed direction much, it's the Iraqis have to some extent lashed around, sometimes talking of peace, sometimes talking of war. The Allies for their part have been fairly steadfast so far. Peter, obviously we can't expect uh, minute by minute updates from the military sources there as to what's going on for fear that the Iraqis pick up the information. But what sort of information do you expect now to be given there in Riyadh? Well, what we're hoping is that we're going to get uh, regular briefings from those uh, military sources whom I've been quoting so often in, in, in the past weeks. Uh, what we're hoping is that we're going to get updates. But it, th this is a very difficult business, really. Um, Clearly, there's nothing that they will say which will in any way jeopardize the lives of the men who are at present risking their lives on, on, on the front. 
Um, we've heard all sorts of reports, and uh, reports of, of um, uh, amphibious assaults, reports of tanks going in various places in the border, some people talking about tanks going into Iraq. I could specula speculate about all of them. Um, frankly, it would not be of enormous value to you because it is mostly speculation. We're getting a lot of gossip around here at the moment. Um, and what I would say is that if I really knew some hard information, then uh, you and I would both share a common cause. We wouldn't pass it on if it was going to do any good to, to, to the Iraqis. So I think, unfortunately, you're not going to get a lot of hard information in this first 24 hours. I think mostly people will be talking in generalities. Um, they will report on incidents when they are over and done with. We will not get reports of, of incidents which are occurring. And I imagine the same applies to those uh, representatives of, of ITN and other reporters who are, of course, on the front line with those troops as they go across the border. Peter, thanks very much indeed. From what we do know, the ground war against Iraq to liberate Kuwait began two and a quarter hours ago, just eight hours after the expiry of the deadline set by President Bush. And a reminder of the first official reaction from Iraq. It came from Iraq's ambassador to the United Nations in New York. He said Iraq will never surrender. A lot of Americans will die also. The first official reaction from Iraq to the start of the ground war against Iraq, what an American source has already called the end game. Now, a reminder, we're interrupting our normal programmes on ITV to bring you the latest developments on the Gulf War. We'll stay on the air as the news from the Gulf comes in. For the moment, we'll take a short break. Join us again in a few moments. Thank you.